Okay, here in lesson one we're going to look at adding, selecting, and moving objects. So if I'm glossing over certain concepts for now, just follow along and you'll see that everything will become self-evident over the course of this first chapter. So let's go ahead and start with adding. So we'll click on this button object icon up here. And remember, I said we're always going to look at three different ways to add objects. So our first way that we're going to look at it is to click on this icon in the icon bar up here. And from the resulting dialog, and we'll examine this in depth later, but for now, just go ahead and click on the Browse for File icon. And in the resulting dialog here, select any button you like. I'm going to choose, maybe I'm in an orangey mood, so I'm going to choose Orange Parallel. I'm just going to double click it and actually maybe I should slow that down as you can see you can actually audition these in real time if you don't know which one you want you can use the arrow button to click through them so I should point that out and when you find the one you want you can press OK so we're gonna go ahead and select the orange parallel button and press OK now it's added it to our canvas we're going to now look at another way of adding objects to our canvas we're going to go ahead and add the same button, however this time we're going to do it by right clicking on the canvas. As you can see here we could have used the shortcut key control 1 as well, but in this case we right clicked. So we're going to select that button from the right click context menu and again we're going to use the same technique of browsing for the file and we're going to choose our orange parallel button. So we're going to just double click on it and press OK. Alright, so that's the second way of adding. And remember, there's not only three ways to add objects, but we're just going to look at three ways. So I encourage you always to explore these concepts a little bit further um, as you go along. Okay, and the third way that we're going to look at this is we're going to go to the Insert menu here and choose Button. And we're going to go ahead... Actually, that's the third way that you could do it, is just go ahead and choose that and then choose the button again. But just for fun, I'm going to go ahead and show a different way. In this case we're going to go to the gallery pane here. We're going to mouse over as you can see it pops right out. And we're going to go to the um, buttons icon in the top here and click on that and it'll show us our button gallery. Then we're going to go ahead here and choose the orange parallel and we're just going to drag it over onto our stage and let it go. So that's kind of a neat way to do it. So those are the three ways that we're going to look at adding objects for now dragging them on from the gallery, right-clicking on the canvas and selecting button, and as well selecting button from the icon bar at the top. Okay, now we're going to take a look at selecting objects. Now we've got our objects here, and as you can see I kind of moved them around there. Let's take a look at how I did that. In order to select an object, the best way is just to click on it, and then you can basically move it around by dragging it or using the arrow keys. We'll look at that in a minute but there's additional ways that you can select objects. Again, we're going to look at three different ways. So the first way is to click on an object. The second way to select an object is to drag. So I've clicked on the canvas and now I have kept my mouse button down and I'm dragging a rectangle around an object and I'm going to let it go. As you can see I selected it. So once again, just to review, you would click on the canvas and hold your mouse button down, your left mouse button, and then drag a rectangle over an object and let it go. You can also drag a rectangle over several objects. As many objects that are in that rectangle, when you let go, they'll be selected. As you notice, when we select multiple ones, there's always a dominant object, that's the one with this bounding box, and the other objects in the group. We'll look at that later. But for now, suffice to say that the last selected object is the dominant object. Okay. So, another way you can select objects is, if you have an object selected, you can press the tab key and it will scroll through the objects on your page. So that's the third way you can select an object. As I say, additionally you'll, you'll want to experiment and find your own ways, but that's the first three that we're going to look at. Okay, now one other aspect of selecting objects, as I mentioned, was the dominant object. So when we have objects sitting here on the stage and we want to select multiple objects, we usually do it by clicking on the objects and holding down the control key. So for example, if I wanted to select the top button and the bottom button only, I would click on the top button like that to select it, then press and hold down the control key and click on the bottom button. And you can see they're both selected now, but not the middle one. So I can go ahead and move those if I like.
without moving the middle one. I'll just put them back here for a minute. As you can see, the last button I selected is the dominant object. It has the bounding box, and that's significant later on when we do our alignment and distribution. For now, I wouldn't worry about it too much, but to suffice to say that it's the last object selected that is the dominant object, and this is important. If you drag a rectangle around a group to select, the dominant object will be the one towards the edge. Oops, I accidentally double clicked. Uh, the dominant object will be the one towards the last edge that you drag to. So in other words, the last selected one. Okay, so now we're going to look at moving objects. Three ways to move them. Once you have selected an object or objects, you can select a group or individual object for moving. You would just go ahead and either drag them by holding your mouse down, clicking it, and then just moving it. So I can move these around freely like you would basically in any image editor. Or you can use your arrow keys. So if you press your arrow key, left, right, up and down, you'll notice that it moves it by a pixel each time. One pixel on your screen. If you hold down your shift key when pressing the arrow keys, you'll notice that it actually moves it by 10 pixels at a time. So this is pretty great. It's a pretty accurate way to move things around and get them right where you want them. And we're just going to briefly take a look at the grid right now because this is significant when you're moving objects. So we'll go to view, grid, and actually we're going to first make sure that snap to grid is engaged. So that's this one here. So we'll select that and then we'll go back again and turn on the grid. So view grid and it gives you this grid on your screen. Now that we've selected snap to grid, when we move our objects they're actually going to snap to this grid. So you, if you try this out at home you'll feel that it's actually snapping to different positions there. Now this is especially handy when you want to, for example, align objects by eye. So you don't want to use the align function, you just actually want to drag them and match them up against a line like this. It's very, very handy. As you can see, I was quickly able to align these objects and now I can select them as a group. Okay, so that's basically our look at moving objects. Additionally, it's important to note here that you can actually move objects programmatically um, using actions and whatnot, but for now we're just looking at these aspects of how you can do this. So we've got um, different ways that we've looked at here of adding, selecting, and moving objects. And basically what we're going to do now is move on to something slightly more advanced. So let's go ahead and tackle lesson two.